Star and back streaming. Welcome to episode four, Alliance of the Golden Witch of Umi Neko no Nakukoroni. Oh boy. Let's do this. This story is very obviously fictional and fantastical in nature. Any resemblance to in existing individuals, organizations, locations, or edifice is entirely coincidental. The first day, October 4th, 1986. Jima Port, Maya chased around and dashed around in excitement. Battler's uproar on the plane must have been hilarious. Hey, Maria! Cut that out! I'm sorry, Battler. Please don't take it badly. What a pathetic guy you are. Even with that huge body, you still can't handle vehicles. Ah, shut up! All humans have one or two things they can't handle. Battler, why don't you come with your aunt on an overseas trip sometime soon? How about Europe? I'm sure you could manage a half-day trip on a plane. <laughs> Stop it, Mother. Balor's dislike for vehicles is probably genetic. Oh, you mean Asuma. For some reason, she just couldn't handle vehicles. Pretty much anything other than a bicycle or a car. Whenever we try to go far away, that one was so annoying with not this, not that. I'm scared, I'm scared. Fall, fall. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Children tend to learn things from their parents that can't handle are dangerous. I'm sure Battler saw Asumu doing something like that and learned that vehicles are scary. <laughs> so it's Asumu's genes then, is it? Knowing that Kyrie hates her. She's like, I fucking hate Battler. <laughs> Who knows? Those would be some pretty annoying genes. That's enough talking about Asumu. Right now, you're the one who's here. Right? You're right. Sorry. He's like, he's like, think about the present, girl. Don't think about her. It's all in the past, baby. Hey, the cars are here. Exactly three of them. Get in, get in. <laughs> Being in high spirits is such a wonderful thing. Without Bala and Maria, the atmosphere in that plane would have been pretty grim. Thanks, I'll assume you meant that literally. Hey brats! The taxis are here! You can play around later. Someone. The tone of Aunt Rosa's voice grew a little frightening. Even when Balor realized they were fooling around a bit too much, just as he expected, he bumped into someone. Oh, sorry! Battler, you guys are going in that car. You keep them waiting. After George urged him to hurry on, Balor apologized to the person he had bumped into and quickly ran to his parents, who were telling him to come quickly. With a clunking sound, the doors of the three taxis were shut up one after another, and they departed for the harbor. As their taxis dashed away, 
The entire world grew suddenly dull and slowed to a halt. Voices, the wind, and even sound. All that stopped. All the people who were trying to move froze like the instant someone takes a photo. Coming to a halt. People and machines and clock hands, even the dust dancing in the wind, were frozen. Some people who were walking froze with one leg still in the air. Scraps of paper dancing in the wind were pinned in midair, frozen in place. Then among the shadows standing in this unmoving world, a single one stirred. Hanyu, are you there? I'm sorry. It was a girl. The girl Balor had just bumped into. Hello! Notice how Angie also has dark blue eyes. Like Maria. Though she had moved, it truly was a subtle thing. Her gaze dropped, her shoulders lowered a minuscule amount, and she sighed. That was all. In a normal world, that probably wouldn't even be taken as a movement. But in this still world, it looked very out of place. Then something else moved. It was a black cat wandering around the shadows near the taxi and rang. <gasps> Wugu, hello! It's my buddy! Hello, Wugu. Meet my other buddy who just went in. It came right behind the girl and leisurely changed its form into that of a human. This was no cat. It was a witch. Of course, the girl who was also a witch. Look, Wugu, it looks like Rika, but it isn't Rika. <laughs> As the witch stood still, her gaze still downwards, she muttered, I can't stop everyone from going to Rokinjima, can I? You cannot. On October 4th, 1986, you are not there. If I were, I would stop everyone from- Oh, oops, my bad. If I were, would stopping everyone really have been possible? Well, I can't imagine what a six-year-old girl could do to make them turn back. Still, that's right. If you were in this place, the probability wouldn't have been zero. Whenever there's a probability greater than zero, I can seek out a miracle. Ha <laughs> I know, right? If I hadn't been sick, and they hadn't left me behind. With her head facing downwards, the witch tightened her fists. They were trembling very slightly. You were sick in bed starting October 4th, 1986. And Peter's game board is sealed off starting October 4th. You are not given a chance to avoid getting sick. In other words, it would normally be able to be absolutely... My bad. In other words, it would normally be absolutely impossible for you to enter her game board. Thanks for being patronizing. I know that. I know that just seeing father, mother, and Onichan healthy like this, even that alone, is a spectacular miracle. Angie had tried to stand the way of her family, attempting to stop them from leaving the airport and heading toward Rokinjima. However, it was impossible for her to exist on October 4th, 1986, so she couldn't do it. Even though her brother had only bumped into her half and apologized, even though he hadn't realized she was his own little sister, it had been such a miracle that she could cry. <laughs> no, Wugu, and she's one of the, is the second protagonist of the story. You can't beat her up. Maybe burn Tastel. Who, look, who is, like, a sad Rika. She only goes Nipa once. Like, Nipa. <laughs> anyway. Sorry about the sarcasm. I won't waste the miracle you've given me. I'm glad to hear it. Come, let us go with them. To Rokenjima. All the pieces are already gathered. The curtain will open on the fourth game. By this time, Beto and Balor will already be seated. <laughs> to Rokinjima, to where my, no, to where everyone's fates change, the Rokinjima of October 4th, 1986, break them legs, <laughs> oh, oh my god, okay, what happened on that day, I'll expose it, I'll learn what it is, and I'll bring them back. As she stood there with her fists still clenched, she surely turned her face up to the heavens. A single teardrop from the depths of her eyes dripped down to the air. 
Oh yeah, there is a shadow realm here. <laughs> In the Time Star movie again, the two witch figures were swallowed up by a blowing gale in a race in an instant. Oh, yeah. appear to be in a good mood. What a pleasant awakening you seem to have had. What do you mean, pleasant awakening? I was so excited I couldn't sleep a wink. Okay. After all, the curtain is rising on the fun fourth game. It seems she had truly been so excited that she hadn't gotten any sleep. Did she show absolutely no signs of lacking sleep because she was young? Or because she had the mind of a little kid? Renove chose not to answer that aloud and laugh <laughs> instead. Oh no! Hold on, let's see. Uh, let's turn that up a little more. Okay. I really ran that battle into the ground last time. Ah, oh, the look on his face when he was like, You tricked me! Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. There we go. Now we have something. That was so pathetic. Even so, is that guy still feeling down? Feeling down, you say? Hmm, that's right. That man's a bit too trusting for his age, isn't he? Indeed. Although you could call that his charm. <laughs> <laughs> ain't it the truth? Ain't it the truth? Well, speaking of which, didn't he totally fall for that one last time? Yes, totally and splendidly. You violated the purity of one never deceived since the time of his birth, as well as his rosebud-like innocence, all to your heart's content. Even the joy of dashing across a field covered with a beautiful new snow on a winter morning and trampling completely wouldn't even begin to compare. Didn't you take Balor's innocent heart, and quite thrillingly, splendidly, atrociously, mercilessly, and uncultured,ly go just a little too far? And you insulted him to the highest degree, enough to make one uneasy. Most people would be crushed after something like that. <laughs> so much that they wouldn't want to see your face ever again. I, I know that much! I also, um, thought that if he was too disarmed to join us at the table, even though the fourth game is finally starting, that would be such a pain. So I came to you thinking that it would be better to prepare a countermeasure for that case beforehand. Hmm. In that case, perhaps it really would be best to prepare such a countermeasure. I am sad to say that your North Wind and the Sun strategy really gave Batzler quite a shock. A <gasps> uh, shock, you say? How bad of one? 
Beata lowered her voice slightly, asking timidly. Renove followed suit and lowered his voice in the same way. In truth, he has been crouching and clutching at his knees for some time now. I spoke to him several times, but he did not answer. I also brought him some food, but he never even seemed to touch it. Th that is troublesome. Is he really feeling that down? <laughs> it's only natural. After all, you... Thoroughly... Beat him down, my lady. That would make most people want to distrust humans. Oh, distrust of humans? How convenient! Let him give up on humans and trust witches! <laughs> oh... Um. <coughs> Sorry... I shouldn't fool around too much. Beato had tried to joke around about it, but the situation seemed to be quite serious that even she took a hint and hid her laughter. Is it really that serious? Should we just wait a little longer before beginning the fourth game? Lydia Brincastle's guests will be arriving, so it may be best to open up the fourth game quickly. However, perhaps you ought to show a little concern for Balor's feelings, milady. Concern? Show concern, you say? How should I do that? Uh, he is feeling down, so... That's right. Uh, shall I cheer him up? When a person's heart is dark and closed off, interacting with them in a dark manner gains you nothing. Your only option is to shine with a brightness stronger than the dark. Damn it! Quit messing around! <laughs> Babbler! Over here! A croissant paper or a would be wasted on the likes of you! Why would I enjoy it myself? Babbler's stomach involuntarily growled at the fragrant smell of the croissant. His breakfast plate was empty, but Babbler hadn't eaten any of it. The biggest glutton of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory, Belizeba had waited for Renove to leave, and then come to snatch the food away. Balor had noticed, and they really had been noisy ever since. Even the Belizeba had only given it back to him immediately, or else thrown it into her mouth right away. She intentionally ran around circles, making fun of Balor. Get my breakfast back, damn it! If you give it back now, I'll let you off with a single flick to the forehead. But if you just try eating it, what are you gonna eat me up instead? <laughs> if you think you can, just try it. I bet I'll be sweet as honey pancakes. <laughs> gotcha. Right now, I want to eat that bread even more than your thighs. Be a good girl and give it here. <laughs> you resist until the end. <laughs> no way, no way. I won't give it to you. Even the croissant wants me to eat it. That the 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 not not the freaking like the when when Mzaki plays and Angie's like turn it the fuck off Amakusa <laughs> Yay Yahoo G Good morning Battler Are you still moping so early in the morning? It's the beginning of a new day and a new game, so let's get our spirits up She flung the door open like a marathon runner drawn in a certain caramel box, with her hands held high and an idiotic cheerfulness. Beato appeared. For some reason, flags from around the world and confetti scattered about perfectly completing this magnificent entrance. Balor and Belizebub, who've been fighting over the croissant, completely forgot about their argument speechless. <laughs> Good morning, Beatrice! I'll just be on my way now! Here, Beller, say, ah! Um, hey, morning, Beto. Glad to see you're cheery this morning. Beto and Balor looked at each other. It seemed neither had a clue what was going on with the other. B Battler, what's going on, Renove? He doesn't- he, he looks totally fine, doesn't he? He isn't clutching his knees, and he's answering! Wait a sec, he was even in the middle of eating! 
<laughs> no, no. He was sleeping like a baby in his futon, clutching his knees. I informed him that it was time to wake up, but he just wouldn't rise. I tried to feed him, but it seems that a naughty cat wandered in and prevented that. <laughs> you tricked me! Like, you should talk. Weren't you the one who played that massive trick last time? I have a clue what's going on, but it looks like you got what you deserved. By the way, Renove, nice one. <laughs> Thank you very much, by the way. The two men stuck up their thumbs as though they understood each other, chuckling together. For a while, Beato was very energetic trying to hide her embarrassment. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Heh. <laughs> Don't take me so lightly. Did you really think I'd still be hiding in a corner holding my knees? <laughs> Then who was that person crying their eyes out in frustration last time? You could have gathered your tears in a jar and called it face lotion. Shut up! That was, um, just because I was a little surprised by your crappy act. I might have looked a little lame, but don't think the same move will work twice. Of course not. And don't disappoint me for falling for the same move over and over again, okay? <laughs> Trick you out of your pants? <laughs> the pants? The pants gonna be gone. <laughs> yeah, just you watch. I'll show you that I'm a guy who gets started every time he's beaten down. Look, Wugu, it's the Keichi of the story. But, Beato. Yes, what? Don't do it again. Huh. Why is that? So you really are weak against a rear attack. You and I are enemies. I will certainly never join forces. I now understand that clearly. So don't you ever try to trick me about that fact again. <laughs> you say that, but knowing your weaknesses, I'll... Beato thought they were still joking around, but that tone had disappeared from Balor's expression some time ago. Beato felt as though his eyes were like the surface of black tea that had cooled down. You hear me? Don't do it again. I don't get it. I might do it again when you've forgotten, right? Don't do it again. <laughs> Pierced by a strong, forceful gaze, Beato held her tongue. Maybe she was certain that Balor would break that silence with laughter. However, Balor's serious expression didn't change in the slightest. So to break that silence, Beato had no choice but to start laughing herself. <laughs> Very well. You and I are worthy opponents. No matter how friendly our relationship, we'll never be anything more than a pair of enemies. If you have not mistaken this, that is enough for me. That's right. I almost forgot you were my enemy for a second there. I won't embarrass myself like that again. I won't fall for your rear attack again. Never again! Are you sure, Valor? You sure? <laughs> it seems I'm not the only one who cannot wait for the fourth game. I am pleased, Battler. Come, take your seat. Yep. Just how I like it. Clever little tricks won't work anymore. Stop acting so tough. You remain in a state of surrender for the last mystery in the previous game. The mystery of Nanjo's murder. Beto, don't do mean tricks like that. Let's just have a clean game of me trying to deny your existence while you mutilate and disgrace my family. <laughs> my answer for that one's still on hold for now. But that doesn't mean that I've lost heart. I'll definitely break your red truth. And show that I can deny witches. <laughs> a commendable attitude. You truly are a man like a phoenix. Don't betray my expectations. With that, let us raise the curtains on the fourth game. But before that, it seems we must welcome a new guest. A guest? You remember as well, correct? 
That mystery girl who appeared at the very end of the last game without an invitation ruining my fun. That person. She says she wants to join in our game. I sent her an official invitation inviting her to join this match. Renove, summon our guest. There's no need. I'm already here. The voice that answered Beato's call came from the darkness in the corner of the room. When Balor turned around in surprise, he could now see the mystery girl there. <laughs> oh yeah, they're enemies to lovers indeed. <laughs> my, my, how rude. All you had to do was greet us as soon as you arrived. I don't make a habit of talking to people before punching them. After I punch, it's a different story though. Yeah. Huh. And what would you say? Good night. Have a nice dream. <laughs> How amusing. How truly amusing. Beto cackled and clapped her hands. But that was only Beto. And nothing rose to Balor's face except a bitter smile. Whew. Sure are a fighter. Bal and the girl's eyes met. He shrugged his shoulders as he spoke. But the girl didn't answer, giving only a cold stare in return. You helped me out in the last game. Thanks for that. I don't need your gratitude. You were just slacking off. I only told you to open your eyes. <laughs> That's so true. Stop slugging off, Balor! <laughs> Beato tried to laugh as though sympathizing with her, but it didn't reach the girl's ears. I know, and he's like, is it because I'm not a blondie with big titties, Battler? Is that why you won't forgive your dad? <laughs> that and I'm your dad. <laughs> She did absolutely nothing except stare at Balor with ice-cold eyes. Well, looks like someone hates me. I'm just annoyed that you aren't taking this fight seriously. You're saying that I'm not serious about this? Don't tell me that travesty earlier was you being serious. Don't take me for a fool. How long do you tend to play along with a witch's farce like this? I'm fighting Beto in my own way and doing it seriously, of course. Seriously? Don't make me laugh. You keep on drinking tea and chatting with a witch for all eternity and call that fighting seriously? Keep the jokes to just your hairdo. Well, that's because I wasn't used to this witch's game in the beginning and I got through a lot of harsh stuff. Still, I'm finally starting to see how to fight and I'm getting the knack of doing it. If the pathetic way I've been acting makes it look like I haven't been serious to you, you're just wrong. Is that so? Of course I know I've got to close in a lot before I can grab Beato by the collar. But no matter how long that distance may be, it's still finite. And in each game that passes, I'm steadily closing that distance step by step. No matter how long it takes, I'll close in on that witch. And I'll definitely checkmate her. It might take a thousand years to use her phrase. But even so, I'll definitely win sooner or later. Why? Because I definitely won't accept losing. I definitely won't stop moving forward and closing in on her. In other words, there's just one thing I can say for sure. I'll definitely win against the witch someday. That's how it is. That's my boy. If there's one thing I know about Balor, he's as stubborn as they come and then some. If me cheating on his mom kept him met for six years, what's the spay Triche has done will give him enough anger to last 10,000. <laughs> Man, what the fuck? She killed me twice and you're just... Whatever, I'm going to the afterlife. Rudolph be like, Ah, it's okay. I like titties. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kiri about to send him to hell. You really don't sound like you're in a hurry. Are you even trying to win? Even the finite can become endless if you treat it the wrong way. By now, you've become an Achilles who couldn't even outstrip a turtle. I get it. So this is why I'm needed. At this rate, there's no way you could win against the Endless Witch, even after a billion years. Who are you? It 
It's not like you'll be struck by lightning if you just tell me your name. At that point, the girl fell silent, gazing straight into Balor's eyes. At first, Balor faltered under the firmness of that look. His gaze wavered slightly, but his eyes gradually began to be sucked into the pupils that were staring at him. And then in so those eyes, he saw a light that he'd seen some time before. Battler was struck by how strongly they resembled the eyes of a girl who definitely couldn't be here, even though that was completely impossible. I know it's stupid, but for some reason it feels true to me. But that can't be right. That person's supposed to be still six years old. You couldn't possibly be Angie, could you? Uh, duh, Battler, but Balor, little silly. If I were to say that's right, would you believe me? Hmm. I'll put it another way. If I said I'm your ally, so trust me, would you believe it? Would you unconditionally trust some unknown girl you're meeting for the first time just because she looks a little like someone you know? It's because you're such a softie that you got tricked so easily in the last game and cried so bitterly. You said it yourself. That kid is six, right? Do I look like I'm six? If I were to claim that I'm a kid, despite that, would you just swallow that story? If you say it like that, there's no way I can argue back. Sorry, uh, that's right, I am a softy, And that should have been made clear to me after the last game. Is that what you meant when I said I wasn't being serious? Yes. You may think you're fighting against a witch, but you're just getting along with her and playing. You're just playing at fighting in a friendly game of chess. That may be a serious contest for you two, but looking at it from far away, I can only see you playing around following the rules like you're good friends. <laughs> That's harsh. But as long as you're unable to win at this game, you won't be released from this place. That's why I came. I came to bring this game to its conclusion. You claim that you're closing in on the witch, but you're just like a hamster running around in a wheel. <laughs> oh, one of those. Those things that run around and around in a place night after night. At a glance, you might think that running around in a wheel is endless. The endless witch Beatrice. It's just like you. He thinks he's fighting, but he's actually just running around in a wheel while making a fool of himself. This isn't a game. This is nothing more than a cage to shut him up in for all eternity. Huh. <laughs> You liken my endless to something like a wheel that a mouse plays in. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> something that's endless in a certain dimension can be less than endless in a higher one. The fact that a Menger sponge has infinite surface area only matters in a world of less than three dimensions. In a three-dimensional world, reality is zero mass. Not only is it not endless, it doesn't even exist. <laughs> What an assertive woman. It seems you are worthy of being called my enemy. Who are you? I'm your ally. And an enemy of witches. Of course, you don't have to believe it. No one can prove that I really am your ally. On the contrary, it's more desirable that you keep your guard up strongly enough to find me very suspicious. That's right. Last time ended up pretty bad. I've got to at least be that careful. I don't plan on getting tricked twice. <laughs> Beato laughed in a truly pleased way, which is humiliating only to Battler. People don't just get tricked out of the blue. That only happens when they fail to check things for themselves and leave it to other people. Saying that you thought the light had turned green just because you saw other people crossing doesn't count as an excuse for getting into an accident. Get it? Yeah, I get it. You're telling me not to swallow information given to me by others, but to think for myself. In the past, I swallowed all the magic Beato showed me. I stopped thinking, so I was useless. Balor Grimace says he remembers many painful losses. The witch laughed again and watched putting on a bold appearance. I'll offer you advice in any way that works for your advantage. Of course, you shouldn't swallow everything I say. Be 
because no one can provide a certain proof that I'm your ally. In the last game, Virgilia, who I thought was an ally, was actually on the witch's side. Balor couldn't rid his head of that eerie smile worn by Virgilia, a person he once thought of as trustworthy and reliable. So I don't need you to unconditionally trust me. You might as well just take my advice as nothing more than an opinion to be considered. After all, the player who's fighting in a game against the witch is you. That's right! Saying that I lost because I followed the moves of an outsider would be too pathetic of an excuse. Oh, yes! My opponent is battler. You're nothing more than an outsider. You should bear that in mind. <laughs> no, I am not an outsider. With Beatrice, an Ushiromiya battler, and I who gaze down from above, it's almost like a fight in the shape of a triangle. At a glance, it might not look like a united front, but having a united front doesn't necessarily mean fighting together. Huh. <laughs> what an odd thing to say. Just now, he described fighting with you as closing the distance, but you can't measure distance with a single eye. Only with two eyes are things visible in three dimensions, and only then can distance be judged. And even when you have two fields of vision, it's pointless if they're in the same place. You can pin down witches more accurately when they're far apart. Shooting from different positions and different angles. So basically, it's crossfire. <laughs> Interesting. We're shooting from different positions and different angles, so I won't get along with anybody. That's how I'll keep my own position separate and catch the witch in a pincer attack. Are you okay with this battler? This girl may actually be an ambush I set up, right? She might just be saying something plausible to gain your trust, right? Maybe. She's been saying that over and over again herself, so of course I can't blindly accept her advice. But as to whether she's worthy of trust or not, I can think for myself and make a decision. As long as I don't stop thinking for myself, I won't be tricked by anyone again. <laughs> what confidence is shooting me a battler? After you said so much, it makes me want to trick you all over again, you see. I can't wait to see what kind of face you'll make when you realize you've been duped once more. How pleasant. It looks like you know my name, but I don't know yours. Tell me. For a while, the girl remained silent without changing her expression even once. She looked as though she couldn't decide whether to say her name or not, or possibly as though she was deciding on the name she'd say on the spot. Gretel. Ghetto? You are? That's my name, dumbass. Call me Gretel. Then should I call myself Hansel? <laughs> hey, just kidding. I'm Ushirumi a battler. Call me battler. Nice to meet you. I hate handshakes. Don't take it personally. Same here. I also hate touching people's hands. Ah, uh, really? Sorry. After all, it isn't certain that you're my ally. And you just told me to keep my guard up, too. Battler drew back his right hand, which he had stuck out. His bitter smile disappeared, and was replaced with a strong resolve directed at this new fourth game. Battler, think deeply about why you must win against this witch. You can't stop with something abstract like, I'll beat her because I don't like it. Have a deep conviction that you'll definitely defeat the witch and escape from this world. Because there is definitely someone waiting for you to come back, for that kid's sake as well. Maybe there was something she wanted to say. Gretel clenched her fist in front of her chest and hung her head in silence at a loss of words for a while. As though smashing through that silence, Beatrice spoke up in a forceful voice. Good! That should be enough of an introduction for Gretel or whoever. Come, try to remember what happened on October 4th. <laughs> Let the curtain open on the fourth game. At the same time, as though it had been blown by a sudden gust of wind, the clock that had been turned back to October 4th, 1986 started to move. While we remained in the witch's tea room, the blue-gray sea and the green Rokanjima spread out beneath us. 
and we could see a boat heading there, its wake trailing behind it. The sky was already cloudy, and it seemed the barrier of the typhoon would soon shut the island away. Also, I wanted to say that I missed talking about the JoJo reference with the killer orangutan with Ava Triss in the last episode. Totally forgot part three. To reference part three. I got too immersed. Anyway. There was that boat docked in the harbor. And Gota helping to unload it. Then, once all the passengers had disembarked, the boat began to separate from the shoreline. The relatives were gradually swallowed up by the island. <laughs> it looks like you're as cheery as ever, Maria. Maria, you'll trip if you aren't careful. Look out! The long missed cousins I had loved and dashed across the beach, getting swallowed by the forest path that led to the mansion and disappeared. And of course, Onichan could be seen among them too. Damn it! Stop right there, Maria! You nimble little brat! <laughs> Maria, whom I loved and started dashing, and Onichan chased after her. They were swallowed up by the forest. Following them, father and mother were also swallowed up. The rest of the parents were swallowed up. They were swallowed up, leaving only me behind. Dumbass. How long are you gonna joke around and play with a witch in a place like this? Come back quickly, Onichan. Don't leave me all alone. And realize, realize how cruel and lonely the world I'm isolated in is. Angie. God, I love her so much.